Hello again, beautiful souls. Welcome to Lunar Goddess Tarot. This is Sarah and I'll be your intuitive guide and your reader today. If you're new, please have a look around and check out some of the videos. I read for star seeds, light workers, twin souls or twin flames and higher level soulmates. <clears throat> really anyone who's on an awakening path or an ascension path is welcome on this channel and can benefit from the messages that they will receive from my readings. If you would like to support me in another way, you can look at my Patreon. You can go over there and have a look. There's three different monthly tiers. It's a monthly subscription service, and I offer mostly written readings over there. There's a reason for that. The written readings are very detailed, and I tune into the energies, so I'm about quality, not quantity over there. But when I deliver, I'm delivering a lot of information and it packs a really full punch. And in addition, if you're looking for private one-on-one -on -one sessions, you can go to the website and see what we're offering currently. And all of this is gonna be found in the description box below the video. And lastly, we have our second group coaching program, which will launch in April of 2022. And there's a reason that we choose the dates that we do. There's a reason we chose six months for this last program. Program. There's a reason we're choosing probably three or four months for this program. There's an acceleration that's happening in 2022 and April through August are some incredible months for transformation and really forward momentum. So we're going to tap into that energy with the group. We're going to assist you guys on coming into inner union and creating breakthroughs in your journey. <clears throat> So without further ado, we're going to just hop today right into the card portion of the reading. I've got the Earth Magic deck, the Native Spirit deck, the Sacred Forest deck, and then the Muse Tarot, which just calls to me almost every single day lately to, to be used in my readings. Now, this is a very earthy reading. There's a lot of earth energy here. I wanted to work with the energy of the earth and the energy of um, just sort of the... I wanted to tap into those very grounded dimensions, if you will, because so far this year we've been in some really high dimensions and this can be really exhausting for the psyche, excuse me, exhausting for the mind, for the heart, for the soul. And so I know a lot of you are feeling soul tired and I want to give you guys some answers. And what I want to talk about um, in this reading is why does the ascension journey why does the ascension journey take such a toll on us um and in particular when you're a, a part of a twin flame couple right it's a spiritual connection that can be grounded into the physical with work with trauma release with inner union there's a lot of things that have to be kind of premeditated or, or pre they have to be in place precursor if you will before that physical union can take place and so a lot of people are working um, in solitary mode right now. You're working as a sovereign being, although you're always tied to that individual because it's literally your soul in another body. And so what I wanna do is I wanna talk about the ascension journey where the, the feminine energy is at, inner and outer feminine, right? The person you identify, if you're in a twin flame connection or a higher level soulmate connection, that person you identify as your divine feminine, or if you're the divine feminine, that person you identify as the divine masculine, which is really a representation of you in another body. That's what that is when you're on these divine journeys. If you're in a higher level soulmate journey, it's two souls and two bodies. Okay, so main difference with twin flames and soulmates. One is not better than the other. Um, both can be challenging. Both have their sets of challenges. Both have their sets of highs and lows. And both have their rewards. But the, the ultimate reward on this ascension journey is inner union. And if each person on this planet were to reach inner union, we could do away with so much of the darkness that exists on this planet and the separation mentality. I'm, you're separate from me, I'm separate from you. I'm gonna judge you, you judge me. Um, you know, you're this, I'm that. And sort of this <clears throat> duality consciousness that we have as human beings that strips away who we really are at the core and then we just identify as a human being so rather than a spiritual being having a human experience so i want to get into some messages here and i'm also being led to really tap into the divine feminine energy today and find out what messages are in store for you so this is a, a special message for the divine feminine so let us start yes we're going to start with the native spirit deck here um, and we're going to tap into the energies here 
um, of what wants to come through and, and what wants to be received. And I'm just going to, if you give me a second, um, I'm going to see if there's any insight here. <clears throat> okay, so what is the feminine healing right now? And what message are you being given? So we're going to ask those two questions. So what is the feminine energy healing right now? Now, we're healing the feminine energy on the planet right now. So this exists in you, divine masculine. This exists in the person you identify as your divine feminine. If you're a divine feminine watching, then this is your feminine energy. I happen to be, for those of you curious, I identify as a twin soul, a light worker, a star seed. And I also have, I'm very much equal parts masculine and feminine. So it's hard for me to say I identify as a divine feminine, even though I definitely can embody that role and that energy. I can very much embody the role of the take charge divine masculine organizer, rational, and getting things done. So I'm very much equal parts logic and emotion. I really value that about myself. I didn't always, but I've come to that place where I'm, I'm very happy to have both. And we all have feminine and masculine energy in us. So it's not like if you identify as the divine feminine, you don't have any masculine energy. <clears throat> Apply the yin and yang principle. We have both existing within our being. We are both. So we have white buffalo coming through. And, and oftentimes what you'll see with white buffalo is the peace pipe. White Buffalo was a very, he's a representation of peace. And in Native American cultures, indigenous cultures, White Buffalo represents this kind of inherent ability that you have to bring peace to a situation or peace to your heart, peace to your soul, um, especially when there's conflict around, or in this case, you know, in winter. So when there's, um, when things might not be so clear or when, when you're kind of in your own energy having to really bring peace to yourself and you know there's there's a solitary energy to this card in this deck as well the white buffalo you know can spend time solitary time alone and in doing so learns a lot about himself and about his own abilities um there's a lot about <clears throat> there, there's a pe very peaceful kind of free-flowing energy here, but there's also the energy of abundance. You know, with peace comes abundance. Um, there's a shape-shifting energy here. So Divine Feminine on your journey right now, what you're healing is, is any like abundance, any, any lack energy that you might have applied to abundance, like a lack energy where you felt like you couldn't make enough, you couldn't do enough, you weren't enough. Believing that all things are possible and Believing that, like believing in your journey, believing that you're here for a reason. Um, I think a lot of people have really taken a hiatus or break from readings and, and the channel and other channels. I've noticed on a lot of other channels that um, I followed from time to time, um, the views are down and, and there's reasons for that. We just got out of the holidays. Things have been very hectic. Things have been challenging, stressful. Um, there's a lot of transitory energy things are changing transformational energy so people are really going within which is a beautiful beautiful thing so i think you know this is the energy of kind of the midas touch here though feminine so <clears throat> whatever you touch will you know the energy can be multiplied multiplied you know tenfold a hundredfold so really tap into this energy and you know restore the balance in your life where you feel things are out of balance or out of whack especially as there's so much transition this year so much transformation so much change and so much is shifting um, not only did the north node and south node just shift and i talk about that that's astrology i i love to do uh, written readings on astrology and also i'd love to do more video readings but it, there doesn't seem to be that much interest in them but i'd love to do more but that's a big big transition that we're experiencing globally is north node went from Gemini and is now in Taurus, South Node went from Sagittarius and is now in Scorpio. So that happened on the 19th of January. So we've got this, this energy of transition, this energy of wanting to bring balance back into our lives as we have Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde. And if it seems like things are stifled right now, or if it seems like things aren't moving or aren't flowing, that's a reason. I'm in the process of moving or um, creating that move. I'm in the process of looking at places, looking at different cities, potentially different states. And it's uh, obviously it's a, a stressful energy. 
uh, to move home, to move house, but it's also very exciting. So I'm having to create balance, especially at nighttime when we're having those anxious thoughts, those nine of swords thoughts that, you know, we've been receiving from the masculine energy and our own masculine energy who wants to take initiative and wants to make those changes, but then is scared of change. So a lot of fear of change is being um, kind of purged or expelled right now. And you can call on my buffalo to give you a lot of peace and just a lot of balance. And there's, there's really, this is a miraculous time, Divine Feminine. It's, it's a miraculous time to be alive. It's a miraculous time for you to make these changes in your life and just follow your soul, follow the your highest calling and your heart and be led by those things rather than being led by fear. And that's a lesson that I'm being taught right now with the help of a soulmate who has come into my life and very grateful for the triggers and for the lessons that are being learned because you know sometimes we just need someone else to point out these things for us and every soul you know whether they hurt us or they <clears throat> anger us or disappoint us they're doing it out of love on a soul level they you know we're all one right we're all one over soul but they did this to assist us they're called here to assist us on our journey to push us out of our comfort zones and that's exactly what's happening here for me and I know for a lot of you too, <clears throat> and even just me saying soulmate, like there's a soulmate in my life who's come into my life. We're friends right now and um, that's where it's at at this moment. But it's interesting because a lot of <clears throat> people who would identify, you know, I'm, I really dropped the labels uh, by the end of last year, I'd really dropped the labels, but a lot of people who identify as a divine feminine have had these soulmates or kindred spirits come in um, to really just bring love and um, lessons and growth and <clears throat> you can welcome them or you can shut them out it's up to you but I don't know why you'd want to shut out love and growth and assistance and guidance and these are souls that contracted to meet up with you in this lifetime for however long and you contracted to learn these lessons together you're teaching them they're teaching you and there's a symbiosis that happens with these connections and if you can just let go of the label and let go of what you thought this journey was going to be, you can be opened up to some really, really beautiful things, Divine Feminine. So um, I've also got the spirit of earth here. And I, like I said, I felt very earthy, grounded energy um, from this reading. And so um, this is what I feel like you're working on right now is, is a grounding, a balancing energy here. And the spirit of earth comes in. Um, I feel like to, to yes, I mean, this is another card of abundance. Um, I just connected the two. So these two cards are of abundance. It's very clear that abundance wants to come into your life. It wants an entrance way. It, it, it's, it's, it's asking for recognition. It's asking for you to tune into it, to drop into that uh, vibration or vortex of abundance. Maybe you haven't been able to do that. And to know that you're enough, like just as you are, that I'm enough. I don't have to do anything or be anything. Um, I don't have to be perfect. And for those of you um, females, uh, males don't go through this necessarily in the same way f females do. I don't think I could be wrong. I could be speaking out of out of you know turn, but a lot of females on this journey, it's it's a rough journey and it is it can take a toll on you physically and you might not have the energy to move your body as much or to eat those healthy foods you want to eat or to go grocery shopping. So you're maybe like I've the past year I've done two years I've done so much like DoorDash and you know all of that because I haven't had the energy to cook and. I'm starting to shift and turn around with this big major purge that I just had that many, many of you have had out there um, through December and January. But even so, there's sort of this energy of, um, you know, just needing to rebuild um, from the ground up, needing to rebuild your, um, like your stature. It's interesting, like your physical stature, your physical vitality. Um, and that's all connected to abundance as well. Your thoughts and ideas, and the healing that needs to happen surrounding love is also connected to abundance. So it's all connected, guys. And I just urge you to see past the limitations of a label and see past the limitations of a tarot reading you've had, whether it's from me or someone else. See past the limitations of what a teacher has said, what a guru has said, of what the whatever it is, a book that you're reading, something that something externally, right, that that is trying to find its way into your consciousness and become your truth, but maybe that's not your truth, right? 
So be really um, diligent and vigilant with the things that are coming at you from the external world. We are learning to do that more and more this year, 2022. Pay attention to how your body feels, you know, and, and respond to that. This year is about creating a home for your soul, right? It's about, it's about how I feel. How do I feel around certain people? How do I feel, um, how do I feel around um, this person that I identify as my counterpart? If it doesn't make you feel good, why would you want to keep yourself in that situation, regardless of what the label is? It's a family member. It's, it's a divine counterpart. It's a friend. It's an ex. It's, it's a this. It's a that. If that person isn't bringing joy, if that person isn't bringing you further along in your journey, you may question, why am I still here in this place of longing? Why am I still here in this place of questioning? If it's a big question mark, or if you see that your counterpart has moved on, but you're stagnant, there are lessons in that. There are lessons in that feminine. Okay, there are lessons in how much self-love are you harboring? How much self-love are you able to pull out so that you can move forward and free yourself from whatever might be holding you back? Okay. <clears throat> I just made myself hungry talking about food. <laughs> be my my next step in my day is to go get some delicious food okay so we're gonna go over to the tarot deck here the muse tarot and we are going to really tap into the energies here of the divine feminine and her journey this is a dedicated video for the divine feminine I may do one for the Divine Masculine. They haven't been um, coming to me as much and, and since I've started to heal my voice and I've started to heal, my throat is still healing, but healing the throat and going through being sick, um, which is really purging. It was really a lot of purging for my body. It's really what that was, a ton of purging, guys. Um, I had a fever for two weeks. I've never experienced that before in my life. And... <clears throat> the allowing that that I didn't really talk a lot about my experience, but the allowing that 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 required of me allowing um, my the fever to be, you know, without trying to do anything with it. It was very uncomfortable to be in my body. It was very uncomfortable to be me for those two weeks and beyond um, really two and a half, three weeks. It was very uncomfortable and I found myself bored. I found myself without the distractions that I would normally be able to distract myself with. Nothing was working. I felt empty. I felt hollow. I felt depressed. I felt anxious. I felt sad. I felt mad. I was feeling all of the emotions at different times. It was a major, major purging. And I know that's linked to the journey and what the counterpart is going through. And even though, you know, you cannot be in communication in the physical or at all or have any sort of physical connection or contact with that person you can still feel what they're going through it's one of the most frustrating and aggravating parts of the journey but it can also be the most beautiful part of the journey so the five of voices came out as i was talking so we're going to just we're going to have a little chat about that five of voices is the five of swords the swords is the mental space the swords is the mind there, there might be a little bit of feeling here in January of being defeated feminine. And this is why I think the abundance <clears throat> messages were coming through. <clears throat> Sometimes I see the five of swords as it's sort of like you want to win. You want to win. You want to be the one that's chosen. You want to be the one that gets what you deserve and oftentimes when you're striving to win like that and you're not really thinking about the highest good of others involved whether there might be children involved there might be exes involved there might be friends involved or family members or animals or a number of things or your highest good and you're not really thinking about that that's why i always say you know when you're setting an intention or a prayer for the highest good of all involved for the highest good of the ex 
for the highest good of the children involved, your children, their children, um, for the highest good of every soul involved in this experience that you've chosen to experience together. You have to, you have to really get to the bottom of what really matters on this quest for abundance, this quest for truth, this quest for um, why am I on this journey, right? Questioning everything. Um, don't allow yourself to compare yourself to other people. Other people's journeys, oh, well, they're in union or they're, they, they're marrying their you know, counterpart or um, they found an amazing soulmate or they got this job and, oh, look, they're traveling the world. Social media can be so detrimental to our mental health. And I think that's what is coming through here is um, the need to step back. And as the, the masculine energy in all of us and the external masculine, the physical manifestation of the masculine you identify as your divine masculine, as they heal addiction right now, you can also look at what am I addicted to? And it might not seem like you can see it on the surface. You might not be able to, you're like, no, I don't see it, Sarah. I don't know what you're talking about. But then you dig deeper and suddenly you realize I'm addicted to social media. I'm addicted to snacking late at night. I'm addicted to junk TV. I'm addicted to judging myself, right? A lot of body shame and body hate comes up for the feminines a lot on this journey because your body literally changes from day to day. Not just the hormones that are shifting in your body as we naturally age, as we progress, as we go through our cycles every month, but it's also just the seasons of life. And then it's this journey and it's all the changes and shifts that you go through one day you know, you, you look in the mirror and go, oh, I'm so disgusted with my body. And then you're retaining water. And the next day you look very slim and slender and toned. It doesn't make sense. So we have to stop trying to make sense of it because this journey is, it's, it's meant to be experienced. It's not, it's not meant to be understood. It, it's, it's meant to be experienced. It's meant for you to surrender. This is the ultimate surrender. This ascension journey, the twin flame journey, it's the ultimate surrender of your soul. So we look into the feminine energy and the healing of the feminine energy. Now the masculine is healing this year. The feminine energy went through a lot of healing last year. The masculine energy is in their healing space. And so you're likely not going to you know, hear from them that much in the physical necessarily. You may, you may not. But I wouldn't rely on that feminine. I wouldn't depend on that. And I wouldn't bet on that. I wouldn't make that a deal breaker to your happiness, your joy ever. Don't put your happiness in someone else's hands. I'll be happy when, or I'll be happy if. Mm. Don't compare yourself. Comparison is the thief of joy. Don't compare yourself to other people's journeys or what's happening or just allow yourself to experience and, and, Go into that place of deep surrender for what is. So we have, yes, 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 Pegasus surrendering. This is one of my favorite animals when I was a little girl. Unicorns and Pegasus. Well, Pegasus can fly. That was even cooler than a unicorn, right? The, the Pegasus can fly. So we see um, the Pegasus here transcending the, you know, look, like saying, I'm transcending the rules of Earth. The rules and the limitations say you can't fly. Well, I'm flying. Look, I got my wings. I got my horn. I'm flying. I'm a magical being. This is about believing in magic and believing that you can transcend your own beliefs. Forget about the beliefs of others, Divine Feminine. Can you transcend your own beliefs and can you bring yourself to a place where you can see beyond what your eyes can see, where you can see beyond the veil of illusion that exists in the 3D world? <clears throat> The Pegasus is known as the protector of the soul in urban legends and myths. So protecting the soul, a very, very interesting. We have this very grounded abundance energy here, peaceful energy, balance energy. And then we have here the opposite, the, the energy of air. Um, I, don't, I don't like this card. This card's going back. I just, it doesn't have a very good energy. Um, and it's, it doesn't seem in line with the rest of the reading. But I know that was a message for someone out there who's, comparing right or who needs to work on their addictions <clears throat> so pegasus is here and pegasus represents magic and immortality the immortality of the soul and the journey right to get back to the place where we came from back to the sky back to heaven whatever it is that you believe in and 
this is always a sign. There, this is an activator. This card is an activator. This is what I would call in this deck an activator. It's activating your magic. It's activating your belief in the unseen and in the unknown. I mean, and if you don't believe in the unseen and unknown, you might not survive this journey because so many times you're walking in the dark. You're in silence from the person you identify as your divine counterpart, <coughs> but you feel them. And just so you know, guys, when you meet a soulmate or a kindred, and it's not, not a karmic partner, but a soulmate or a kindred, ha after having met your counterpart, you will also experience telepathy with them. You will experience the mirroring with them. You will experience, um, you will feel their energy coming through. So then you're going to have two energies coming through, three energies coming through. Um, it can be confusing. It can be overwhelming. So I just want to point that out, that if someone's like, well, I I'm feeling this, so now I'm confused. That's why. Okay, so you're going to pick up and tap, on, tap into their energies, and they can tap into yours as well. <coughs> but that's part of the healing journey. This is a powerful transformation is happening, feminine. Powerful, powerful. So prepare yourself to rise above adversity. And remember I've been saying the movement, the movement energy of this month. It's like the, that very wands, fiery energy. That's why we're getting grounded in the beginning. You got to get grounded before you can fly, feminine. So we're getting grounded, creating that abundance. Then from that place, you, you take flight. And it, it's going to take you out of your comfort zone, without a doubt, this year. Um, for me, the thought of, I, I'm, I'm very family oriented and I helped raise my nephew who's about to be 18 this year. So I finally feel like I, I can do this move, but I'm still fighting thoughts of feeling guilty for leaving. My parents live in the area I live in and my nephew is here and you know, <clears throat> I do, I have, but then I have to remember this is my journey and I've, I've played my part well, and the thought of potentially moving out of state is kind of terrifying, but I have to go where I am being led, and I have to be, I know that there's more journeys to be experienced, more chapters to be written. Um, one thing that I see a lot of people do on this journey as a feminine is you wait, and you do, you, you wait and you stay in that kind of stagnant energy because you're waiting for the counterpart. But meanwhile, they're off living their lives, oftentimes with somebody else. And you do that and you are shutting the door on joy. You're shutting the door on your abundance. You're shutting the joy, joy on, you're shutting the door, <laughs> excuse me, on change, which could bring you more joy and happiness than you ever thought possible. More abundance, right? More clients. Um, more, more happiness, more friends, more, more soul family. And you just didn't even know it because you were too busy um, in that energy of fear or in that energy of, well, I'm going to wait. Like, and then, you know, oftentimes, well, if I, if I, if I move, if, you know, those of you who live in the same state as the person, if I move, I'm never going to see them again. When you decide to make those bold moves, guess what? They're going to mirror that. That's when they're going to make the bold moves in their lives. So you watch it play out. It's, it's really beautiful. So a lot of changes, a lot of things are shifting for the divine feminine. You notice we only, I have only pulled four cards total and look at all this information that's coming out from the cards. <clears throat> I do want to just tap into the earth magic deck, Oracle deck here and see what messages are available. Lightning power. It's funny, we've got the earth energy, the fire energy, we've got the air energy here. <clears throat> you could consider this. Well, this could be considered, okay, air, let's say fire, earth. So we're missing the water energy. But then I, then I, this also popped out, so that would be the water energy. And I do want to take this card actually because. Um, yes, there's a need for going within in stillness and there's a need for you to understand that they're, they're, the answers you know, can come from stillness. The answers don't lie outside of us, they lie inside of us. And you know, this could be a call for meditation or a call for the feminine to really nurture 
her feminine side even more. Nurture the arts, nurture <clears throat> being by bodies of water. It's funny because everywhere I'm looking, I live near the beach, but everywhere I'm looking, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a beach town. <clears throat> and what I love about the lightning card is it's, it's, and we just had some storms come through my area this weekend. So it's the energy of movement in the form of fire, in the form of, of air, like electricity in the air, right? That, that fire energy, the electricity and creating movement, creating change, um, bringing in power, bringing in lots and lots of power for you to make the moves that you need to make to shift things in your life and whatever that might be. And if you're, again, we do offer those one-on-one -on -one sessions. So if you're wanting powerful transformation, if you're wanting those breakthroughs, we can bring them to you in group form or we can bring them to you in individual form. Um, a lot of people, I would say about half of the people in our group right now that we're working with, the half of them have opted for the private sessions as well. So they're doing the group sessions and they're doing the private sessions. And you get tr the ultimate transformation from doing both. And support of the group is second to none. And then the one-on-one -on -one sessions are going to really catapult your journey onward and upward and giving you an understanding of your gifts, giving you an understanding of why your, your, your journey has unfolded the way it has, why you might be in separation. Can you expect a union in this lifetime? Is there a soulmate coming through? Um, what can you do to shift through those inner child wounds or those, the trauma that you're carrying from childhood? We all have it. There's not a single person on this earth who doesn't have an ounce, at least an ounce of childhood trauma every single person on the earth has it. So we, we really tap into, and we can tell you if it is your counterpart. If you have that burning question, is this my counterpart? We can tell you that as well. And we only, we will only tell you if you ask, we won't volunteer that information, but some people really want to know so they can move on with their lives or they want to know so that they can, um, make whatever decision they need to make based on that. But <clears throat> again, the reason that we offer these other resources, in addition to the videos that I offer here and the Patreon post is my mission, part of my mission at this point in time is to get as many people as possible comfortable in their own skin, bathing and soaking in self-love, understanding the journey, understanding themselves, getting out of that mental hell of longing and, and um, seeking love outside of yourself and getting yourself into that place of inner union because People don't want to hear that. When you're first on the journey, all you want is, I just want to be with that person. I want to be with that person. I want to be with him. I don't want to hear anything else. But then as you go forward, as you move forward on your journey, you realize, I want to be happy. I want to experience love. I want to, I want to be able to give love and receive love. And I want to be able to give and receive abundance. I want to be able to give and receive hope. Like, I want to create joy in my life. And it becomes less and less about the other physical person. And you'll see it as you move forward on your journey. You will come into your own feminine. You will come into a place where you have healed so much that you don't even need or want that person. And then that's probably when they'll come back. And then you have a choice to make. You are empowered and you get to decide, is it? Do you choose a soulmate? Do you choose this person? Do you just choose yourself? Do you choose to be alone? Do you choose abundance? Do you choose travel? Whatever it might be. I don't know what your path is, but we can look into that for you. We can help you create the joy that you're seeking. There's been a lot of suffering on this journey and you know, there's channels out there who only talk about the karmic, the karmic, the karmic, that energy that they're inviting into not only their lives, but your life as you watch those videos and your journey is very toxic. It's heavy. It's toxic. You're going to carry that weight with you. It's going to affect your connection. Um, it's going to affect your psyche. And it's, it's just really, I wish they wouldn't, I wish they wouldn't do that because it draws people in and you get addicted to that. It doesn't matter if there is a karmic person. It doesn't matter. They, it's an illusion. They're just a lesson for your person. You have to really, you have to look beyond social media. You have to look beyond the happy couple. You have to look beyond whatever it is that you're seeing. And, and, and it, what's healthier than that is turn off social media, disconnect from social media, disconnect from, if you're supposed to be in separation, disconnect from that person so that you can heal and they can heal. And then you decide, you put your boundaries down and decide, I will only invite X, 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 Y, Z into my life. I will only invite them into my life 
if this is present or this is happening. I will not, I will no longer tolerate or allow X, Y, Z. You have to set your boundaries and you have to get to a place of such deep reverence for self and deep self-love that nothing outside of you can attack or um, it can attack your, your peace, right? Your inner peace, white buffalo. You create that inner balance and it doesn't matter what the counterpart says or does or anyone else, a soulmate or a friend or a family member or a stupid social media post, you know? Not all social media is bad, but I'm not a huge fan of it in general, except for the food posts and the animal posts and, and the comedy. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is an empower, feminine, be empowered, okay? Allow yourself to tap into your personal power. Go to that place of stillness. Know that you're transforming, you're transcending those lower level energies. That's why so much physical symptoms have arisen and come to the surface so that you can purge and, and excavate them from your mind, your body, your experience once and for all. And know that things are shifting on on all fronts on this journey. I send you guys so much love and support. Thank you for your love and support on this journey. It means so much to me. Take great care and I'll see you guys soon.